Welcome back today to our study in the book of 1 Thessalonians. We are nearing the end of chapter 2. We're actually going to read 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 13 through 20 today as we look at uh, Paul's ministry amongst the Thessalonian believers. And we'll look at some of these verses today. It says there in 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13, For this cause also we thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of our own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who have both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our joy, or what is our hope, rather, or joy, or crown of rejoicing, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming, for ye are our glory and joy. So as we come into these verses, we see the results of the ministry of the Apostle Paul. Paul's been telling us about his ministry among the Thessalonians in this chapter, and now as we come into the end of the chapter, he talks about the results of that ministry. First of all, we see his unceasing thanks in verse 13. He says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because we have received the word of God, because ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Paul commends them, first of all, because they received the word of God as the word of God. He says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. Oh, friends, that people would have that exact same mentality today. Sadly, there are some who profess to be Christians who when you open up the word of God and preach the word of God, if they don't like it, uh, what you're saying, they say, well, that's just your opinion or that's just what you think. Rather than acknowledging and accepting the fact that it is the word of God, that they are out of line, and that there are some things that they need to do in order to bring themselves in line with the Word of God. Paul commends these Thessalonian believers, and he says, I'm thankful for you, and one of the things I'm thankful about is that when you receive the Word of God, you did not receive it as the Word of men, but as it is in truth the Word of God. As we think about that, let me take you to a couple of verses. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And verse 16 says this. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You know what he's saying there? Whether we like it or not when we hear it, all of the word of God is profitable to us. And it's profitable to correct us. It is profitable to show us what is right, what's not right, how to get right, and how to stay right. If we would simply listen to the Word of God. All of it is God's Word. It is not the thoughts and the opinions of men. And we must receive the Word of God as it is in truth, the Word of God. Second Peter chapter 1 says this in verses 20 and 21. It says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Once again, reminding us that this book is a book that comes to us from God. That every single word in this book is the word of God. James or Job 23 verse 12, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Oh, friends, I encourage you today and I exhort you, do not go back from the commandment of the lips of God. What he says in his word, be faithful in doing it. Receive the word of God as it is the word of God. And 
understand that it is more important to you even than what you consider your necessary food. Then in Psalm chapter 12, the writer there says this. Psalm chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. It says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. So there he's talking about the words of God. And then in verse 7, it says, Thou shalt keep them. What is the them? All you got to do is refer back to verse 6. And you can see very clearly that it is the words of God that he has promised to keep. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So he commends them because they received the word of God as the word of God. But then he also commends them for their effectual work, for the effectual work of the word of God. Notice what it says there in verse 13. It says, For this cause also thank we with God without ceasing, because that when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. You know what he's saying there? He's saying you not only accepted it as the word of God, you not only when you heard the word of God preached, saying this is what God says, this is the word of God, but he says you allowed it to effectually work in you. You know what he's saying there? It wasn't just a head knowledge thing. It wasn't just something that you knew. It was something that you diligently applied to your life. Somebody said one time, I can't remember who it was, I'm thinking it was either Spurgeon or Moody, but I can't remember. They said the scriptures are of little use to those who do not apply them. Friends, if we know what the Word of God says, and we acknowledge it as the Word of God, but we don't apply it to our life, what good does it do to us? And he says here to these Thessalonian believers, you not only accepted it as the Word of God, but you were faithful in living it. You were faithful in applying it in your life. Friend, let me ask you, where are you today? Do you accept the Word of God as the Word of God? Are you one of these people who question and deny the Word of God? Uh, you know, who try to alter and change it, add to it, remove from it, twist it, make it say what you want it to say? As many of the as the uh, liberals do today and the modern versions do? Or do you accept the Word of God as the Word of God? And do you allow the Word of God to mold you and make you into what it is that God wants you to be? Do you submit to what the Word of God says in your life? Then he talks about their unceasing walk, even in persecution in verses 14 and 15. He says, For ye brethren became followers of the churches of God which in Judea are in Christ Jesus for ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen even as they have of the Jews so he talks about the persecution that is taking place there and the opposition that they are getting for being Christians but they're still standing firm in the midst of the persecution they're not facing difficulty and saying well this can't be god's will i guess we won't live for him no friends they continue to go on for god verse 15 says who both killed the lord jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us notice this and they please not god and are contrary to all men you know what he's saying here he's saying they in what they're doing and, and we know this obviously or i hope you know this but he says in what they're doing, it is not pleasing to God. It's amazing how some people in the name of religion can today can be persecuting Christians, persecuting the way of Jesus Christ, and they think that in the process of doing it, that they are pleasing God. And he says they are not pleasing to God, and he encourages us to be pleasing to God in all things. And then he says this, and they are contrary to all men. You know what he's saying there? He's saying the men, the people that stand for the truth of the word of God, he says there will be those who, be, who will be contrary to them. There will be those who will be opposed to the preaching of the word of God. But he says do not allow that opposition to deter you from being faithful in proclaiming the word of God. Just because people are opposed to what God says does not mean that we should stop preaching what God says. God has given us his word and he expects us to faithfully communicate the word of God. And Paul did that and the Thessalonian believers did that even in the face of persecution. And may we have that same resolve in our hearts and lives today as the people of 
God. Next day, we will conclude 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Have a great day.